for this next session, Getting Ahead of Disruption. And our keynote speaker is Mr. Shavik Banerjee, Chief Technology Officer, Tata Cleek, and Vice President, Digital Initiatives, Tata Industries. Before I invite him on to the days, a few words of introduction for Mr. Shovik Banerjee. One of the top six technologists globally with over 150 implementations running across the globe, Mr. Shovik Banerjee is a technologist and vice president, Tata Industries. Digital initiatives, advisory to group companies and CTOs of Tata Clique by profession. He is a tech evangelist and entrepreneur by heart and has built two successful startups and sold them in the UK. Having mentored over 600 senior management over the years, Mr. Shovik is in India and is also mentoring select startups on building successful business models. He is on the board of advisors for several companies and startups alike. He has been responsible for disruptive innovation ideas in technology and omni-channel commerce that have earned him the distinction and title of being one of the only six people the only person of Indian origin in the world to have worked on all global omni-channel platforms. Please give a huge round of applause to Mr. Shovik Banerjee as I invite him onto the stage. Sir. Thank you. Good afternoon. Can I say, can I get a good afternoon back? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Without the introduction, uh, my topic is um, getting ahead of disruption. Um, I have 15 minutes, so I'm going to tell you two stories of how uh, disruption has always been there and uh, how we are able to disrupt from a technology, from an operating model, from a business model. Uh, 2014 October, I was leading the technology practice for a global um, ERP giant called SAP. I was summoned to come to the country uh, in an idea that was floating in a large organization's head. When I came, it was a 10-slide PPT. And the idea was, how can we get to 900 million users and connect them through a device, through a network, through the ability to ensure the tier two, tier three towns and Indians living there are connected without having the ability to cost, without having the ability to pay humongous amount of bills, with the ability to have a smartphone. That was a short slide. Um, of course, we know what the 4G organization we are talking about. I was responsible to architect that. Now, there have been trials made. Globally, 4G got rolled out ex in, in exponential way in Western Europe and North America. Now, when you think that India, which doesn't have infrastructure, optical fiber lines, Martin Nietzsche Boshate Hai, how do I get there? It's a 1 billion, 1.4 billion as per the Sensex. How do I get there? So disruption is firstly in our right brain, which is our logical head, and our left brain, which is our creative part. So the first thought has to come from here. Now the thought might not translate into a great execution. But the disruption germ is the first part. There's a, here's a little data about you guys. Andheri East in Mumbai has 823 startups operating and have been funded. People think Bangalore is the startup hub. You know the second startup hub in the country now getting registered and growing is a 15 square kilometer radius where we are sitting today. The thought and the germ is the key. Disruption has happened from the age of time. Now, when someone thought that I want to put free internet on a smartphone 
and I'll take the infrastructure cost and I'll put airwaves across, that thought is a disruption. I'm very close to that subject, it's well documented. That thought was the disruptor force. <laughs> then came what technology stack to use. Then came what operating model to use. Then came what business model to use. Free service, does it work? It doesn't work. Now you see the monetization model. So the story goes of disruption is, we disrupt in our head first. Now comes the world of 5G. How many people think in this room that radio frequency was invented by Marconi? Can I have a raise of hands, please? And how many people do you think in this room believe that radio frequency was invented by Professor Jagadish Chandra Bosch? So there was disruption there. Only that, only the British basically played the bureaucratic game to give him the invention. Now which is getting contested. Shara Prithivite, A Shomoy, that invention is coming to a Bangali. Can I have a round of applause for the man who did that at that point in time? 5G wouldn't work without the frequency he invented. He invented, but he caused a disruption for Marconi to enhance and take that path. Now that was disruption. Disruption is when Alexa and Echo can't translate 22 languages of India. And a startup from this city called Mihoop does that for 22 languages of India. That is disruption. And that product will be going into 45 million handsets across the country shortly. It's that idea. The idea is the key part. You can't be a me too. You can't have a herd mentality. That's not disruption. Disruption is when your ideation takes the longest time. It could take five years. It could take seven years, but you have thought of it ahead of 30 years. Don't think that disruption is about digital transformation. It is the biggest possible lie, I would say, on your face today. I've done enough platform transformation across the world. Disruption is making an operating model that with free service, powering infrastructure, I will monetize at the end of five years, seven years. Hence. You have so many users on our 4G madness. Facebook users from India has got 80% usage through that network. So it is a story by itself globally. So that was a core disruption. Next story. India was getting ready for e-commerce. Amazon came in. Two brothers from Amazon came through. The Bansal brothers created Flipkart, which was a, like a me too again. And then various e-commerce companies have come through and have been doing okay. I was fortunate to again architect in parallel another disruption and was witnessing that. When the Tata Group came into the e-commerce marketplace, they thought, this is a billion dollar industry I have to put billions of dollars to buy inventory to put a marketplace because you've got to procure inventory. But India is an aspirational country. And India requires a marketplace where retail brick and mortar stores are a go-to a go-to destination in the weekend for a family. What if we can tap that? So that thought happened in the, in the founders of an organization. And they said, we will forget the warehouse model. We will be India's first fulfillment e-commerce platform through the stores. Now, if you use that model, it's a brilliant idea. What happens is you don't have to spend millions and millions of dollars and rupees to buy inventory for the customer to buy. Your entire retail store brand footprint is your fulfillment center. So that thought again came through because they were the, the Tatas were the last entrant in the market. 
and e-commerce had established. The marketplace was booming. But none of them were profitable. Now, if you don't spend that amount of money on warehouse fulfillment, you can save that money because fulfillment is from the stores. And what do the brands and the retail stores like? Audiences and people in my store. As a result, ship from store model came through. First, in a, first of a kind in the world. And hence, the birth of Tata Click happened. And then the birth of another disruption happened there. People used to think, you know, aspirational brands are for the metros, you know, international brands, electronic international brands are for the metros. When Tata Click launched, nine months nothing happened. Suddenly, data started coming through, and the team at Tata Click realized that from Apple to Gucci to Ted Baker, we're getting bought from Amritsar, Tiruchirapalli, Malda. So we are in a bubble. We think our metros rule our country, which is, in, which is incorrect. So there's another operating model which has come in. Now various international brands are camping out of these tier two, tier three. They know that the wallet share of Indians are there also. That is disruption, which was thought ahead because nobody had thought of. Again, the thought that software, execution, platform, they're all subsets, they get mapped. There's the last part to this is, there is a, there is a real big buzzword right now. And that buzzword is artificial intelligence. Now, I had the fortune, I had the I had the honor and privilege to do a research and a, and a doctorate in that field of study 20 years back. But the biggest misnomer about artificial intelligence is it is going to take away jobs, it's going to automate processes, it's going to make human beings redundant. How? The germ of artificial intelligence is very simple. It has got everything to do with nervous system of our body. The basis of artificial intelligence is neural network. Long back, 35 years back, they took a snapshot of our brain, 1,000%, and that translated into software through a mathematical model. It's as simple as that. So if a little baby walks, he's not taught. If you throw a little puppy in the water, he or she starts swimming. That's the intelligence and the cognitive part. That's neural network. Anything you hear in the world today about artificial intelligence, if it doesn't have neural network built in it, you can ignore that article, that book, that write-up, because it's untrue. Where you don't learn and self-learn, and you have to feed data into a platform, that's not artificial intelligence. That's a different world of that. That's called semantic networks. Now, disruption has now hit the country in the artificial intelligence space. People used to think Tata Steel, a very monolithic dinosaur. You know what? Blast furnaces get monitored by nine drones. You know what? Not a single hazard happens because on the plant line, there are sensors. People are calling big names to that. Internet of things, it's nothing. It's sensor analytics. Now, that has been there. They had thought of it. They have implemented it. It's been running for a year and a half. People are talking about IoT. Equivalent, another Indian conglomerate sets up a Jamnagar plant after the earthquake, and a plant engineer, as we speak, switches on that plant through an app while he's driving to the plant. And this was happening two and a half years back. That earthquake was the germ. Those hazards on the steel plant was the germ for disruption. So disruption doesn't require any traditional linear thinking. If you see a gap, you can disrupt. If you see an opportunity, you can disrupt. Software is agnostic. Processes can be agnostic. If software and processes was the way, then India would have championed and became a product country. And the private sector would have championed. 
whereas the government has rolled out six products pan India for a billion. Works or not is irrelevant. So the disruption is the way of thinking how you want to break it. You will have an army of people, an army of coders writing platforms for you. You will have an army of management consultants putting the processes for you. And you'll have an army of people getting an organization and its capex and opex formed. My learnings over the years has been that if you want to get ahead of disruption, if you have any idea which you think nobody is looking into it, you have to do enough, enough searching and Google might just fall short. You have to search the entire IEEE database. You have to search the entire non-WW part of the web. And there are ways to do that. But if you think any idea which nobody is thinking of, register it first thing. And if you know that even if it's nobody is thinking of it in India and somebody is thought of it in North America or South America, register that thought because you have that point in time disrupted. Execution of it comes later. Forming whether it's going to be a product or a service or a small little business is part later and gets executed. But that thought is something which Indians have started to champion on. My last minute, I would say that in, in India's biggest disruption, what you observe is we used to sell ourselves cheap to the Europeans and North Americans because we were a services industry. Hence, the growth of great organizations like Infosys, Wipro, TCS have come up. But the paradigm is shifting. Back in the day, there was not a single global product from the technology space. There was one, Finnacle from Infosys. We championed. Now we have many. The paradigm is shifting in India's disruptive ecosystem. India is becoming a product country. India is not a services country anymore. India is completely becoming a product country. And every product, whether it's a Me Too or whether it has any new use cases, has the ability now to disrupt your life. Your world moves around your smartphones. TV is getting redundant. 15 OTT platforms, I mean Hotstar to Old Balaji, is what you, where you, what you, and where and how you want to watch content. Netflix to Amazon Originals has a movie released. You know, the newest movie gets released in two weeks' time on that platform. So the disruption of entertainment is happening. Kids' content is going through disruption. Learning content is going through disruption. So to all of you esteemed, knowledgeable individuals, I would urge you, if in this 15 minutes, if I have been able to do anything, just take away... Don't let your thoughts fly away. We are the biggest intelligent race in the country. We are arguably the biggest intelligence species in the universe, about, of, regard, regardless of the conspiracy theories of UFOs in North America. The whole point is, if you have that thought, which is non, which is unique to your locality, to your city, to your state, to your country, you have disrupted. That idea requires execution. You will find an endorser. You will find a huge evangelist powering you. And I urge you to not let your ideas go away because those are disruptive germs. And let's stop dreaming about things. Start visualizing and it will get executed. Thank you so much for the 15 minutes of your time. Thank you very much, sir. We request you to stay on stage for just a couple of minutes. And I request uh, Ms. Shirley Biswas, Associate Vice President, Audience Development and Sales, ABP Private Limited, to kindly come forward and present a memento to Mr. Shovik Banerjee. Thank you very much for this very interesting session. I'm sure the audience will have questions. We can ask, them off, ask him offline. Thank you.